Good afternoon. You know, I've been to funerals that were more uh, <laughs> upbeat than this. Let, let's try that again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I hope that you are all as glad to be here as we are to have you here. I know that it has been a long time coming. How many people here should have graduated a year ago? Uh, but it's here now, and we're glad to have you here. And we're excited about today's uh, commencement ceremony. We'd like to start with the singing of the national anthem. So I would ask that you rise and join with our provost, Dr. Chance Glenn, in the singing of the national anthem. <clears throat> Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light All oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight All oh, the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting That our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave? Oh, the land of the free and the Please be seated. We have a number of folks here that are with us today that I'd like to very briefly introduce. First of all, we are most fortunate to have serving as today's marshal for the ceremony, the president of the faculty senate, Dr. Ricardo Teixeira. We are fortunate to have a set of dedicated staff and administrators who work to help students and achieve success, who are a part of the President's Cabinet, the administrative team of the university. I would ask those on the, on the platform to stand and be recognized. And of course, the lifeblood of the university is its students. And if the students are, in fact, our lifeblood, then the faculty is the heart that pumps that blood. So I'd like the members of the business faculty who are here today to stand and be recognized by the students they have served over the last few years. Faculty members. And now I would ask you to stand once more as we participate in a moment of reflection led by the president of the Student Government Association, Ms. Tiara Figueroa, please stand.
My understanding is that the purpose of taking a moment to reflect is to help each of us focus on this moment in time to be appreciative of our past, present, and future. It is essential to be present. And the word present is interesting since it has several meanings, which we can all apply today. A present is a gift. To present is to give something. To be present is to be here in this moment in time. And to be in the present is to be fully focused on what you are doing. How many times have you used the word present during your last four years to say, here I am when your name was called on the roll? This portion of the ceremony is meant to give you an opportunity to be present now, to be here in this moment to consider all the great accomplishments you have achieved, to realize where you are and consider all of those who are here with you today, who came to hear your name called and for you to say, I'm here. All the great philosophers and thinkers teach us that enlightenment begins with understanding the significance of purpose and meaning. Plato, Rousseau, Frankel, Kant, and others thought about the importance of being present in some shape, way, and form. So the challenge is to be present in the moment with eyes and heart wide open. It is to see the moment for what it is, a goal, a goal realized and a gift received. We offer this moment for of time for each of you to reflect why you are here, how you came to be here, and where you may go from here. Please join me as we take a few seconds to reflect upon your, our journey to this point. Thank you, please be seated. Thank you, Ms. Figueroa. Today is an exceptional day in the life of the university. And perhaps the most important reason for that is that you are here and you made it. A pandemic, who would have thought? But that didn't turn you aside. That didn't keep you from doing what you needed to do. It didn't keep you from being able to come here and celebrate. In spite of all the challenges that you may have experienced as a result of that, you're here. Now, ordinarily in a commencement ceremony, we would bring in a speaker, an esteemed expert in his field, who would give you a short lecture to prepare you for the life ahead of you, to inspire you, to engage you, but quite frankly, we thought you'd suffered enough already. So I'm just going to talk to you for just a moment about what we're doing here today. We are engaging in a ceremony that has a 1,000 year history. It started in the Dark Ages. We call it the Dark Ages because life was grim then. We see our lives as an upward ramp, that we can go where we want to go. If we work hard, if we invest ourselves, we can do what we want to with our lives. But at that period of time, wherever you were born, that was going to be where you spent your life. If you were born in the house of a peasant, you were going to spend your entire life as a peasant. It didn't matter where you were along the social scale, and there was a very rigid social caste, that was it for you. And anyone you met could tell by looking at you where you belonged, what was expected of you. And there was only one or two ways in which you could improve your lot in life. One of those was by gaining knowledge, because knowledge was power. There was only a few ways to get access to it. Books were a rare commodity, and there were really only two places where you could find them. One would be in private libraries, and again, you'd have to be a nobleman, someone born into the family that owned the library. The only other place were in the libraries of monasteries, monastic orders, that allowed people to come in and join the order and have access to those books. And in order to do that, you had to agree to become a part of that society. You had to don the robe. The robe was a way of saying you no longer were a member of your past community, you were a member of a new community. And with that, you assumed certain responsibilities. A priest was bound to provide things for the people he encountered. 
confession, absolution, service to the poor, those were his responsibilities. And each person who met a cleric knew that he was a cleric, knew what was expected of him. Over many hundreds of years, universities grew and became separate from the monastic orders. And the wearing of robes became more symbolic and yet, again, remained the same. It was the robe assumed by someone who was a seeker of knowledge, someone who was looking for a path upward. In fact, there was one point in time when a doctorate degree, the highest degree that could be conferred, could only be conferred by the Pope. It was that important, that sacred. And so, as we've come through the years, people don the robe at commencement because this is a time that we hope that you would agree that putting on this robe, being here today, is a declaration to the world of who you are and where you're going. And it is a declaration that you are a new person, that you have a path before you and you are hopeful about that, and that you are coming to be a part of the community of scholars. If you were to talk to faculty members, I believe they would tell you that their choice to don the academic robes and be in this community of scholars was a life-changing event for them. And we hope it is a life-changing event for you. My hope for each of you is that, as you that the education you receive here helps you achieve the future you have in mind for yourself, that it helps open the doors that you need to pass through, and that you will agree that coming to UHV was part of changing your life. But I would remind you that today's ceremony is called commencement, not conclusion. You are not through, you are beginning. From this day forward, you are a clear example of what a degree from UHV can do for a person. You are now and ever shall be the sons and daughters of University of Houston, Victoria a member of the Jaguar family, an alumnus. Whatever field you have chosen, people will look at you and judge us. When you come up here and get your degree, the last thing I will tell you is now go and do good work. Go out and show the world how a UHV degree can help you open any door that you want to pass through. And I want you to know that as you go out today to engage your future and change your world, that UHV is proud of you but we are looking forward to being prouder yet. And we will watch in anticipation to see what you accomplish in your life, the lives of your family, and the lives of your community. Do good work and make us prouder. And while we are talking about community, I want to remind you of something that I truly believe every educated person knows. You rarely will accomplish anything of lasting value and merit alone. You will always accomplish great things with other people, in concert with them, in cooperation with them, not in opposition to them. The great things we accomplish, we accomplish with our people. And you are surrounded here today by the people who figuratively and literally helped you get to this place in your life. You didn't come here alone today. You came here with your people. These are people who care about you and people that you care about. It is the mark of an educated person to understand the importance of gratitude and to be thankful. So do not leave this place today without saying thank you to your people. Life is waiting for you to experience it. It is indeed a summation of the experiences that we have from the moment we take our first breath until the time we take our last. During the past year or so, we have had experiences together that will remain with us for a lifetime. In many ways, they have shaped us and they have forced us to make decisions about how we choose to live among each other going forward. Therefore, be thankful, grateful, gracious, compassionate, and understanding, these are all signs that the knowledge we have, have obtained is worthy 
of the responsibility that we have to this world that we share together. So my message to you today is both short and simple. Come up here today and celebrate. Be joyous. Celebrate your accomplishment and be hopeful about the path you have chosen. Let the robe you are wearing today be your declaration to the world of who you are and where you are going. Embrace and thank your people. Let this commencement exercise be the start of the next stage of your life. Stand proud that you are part of UHV's Jack's Nation and show the world what you and UHV can accomplish together. Godspeed. Thank you, President Glenn. And now I would like to recognize some of the special faculty and students at the university. I would like, uh, if you would, to first direct your attention to page six in your program to view the list of faculty emeriti and those faculty recognized in spring 2020 and 21 by their students and peers for excellence in teaching in research and in service. These faculty should be commended for their work and the difference that they make at the university and in our students' lives. UHV definitely has outstanding students, but those graduating with honors have shown special dedication to their studies. These undergraduate candidates are wearing gold braids over their robes and their names are listed in your program. I'm pleased to recognize them today. So candidates graduating cum laude with honor have grade point averages of 3.5 to 3.67 on a four point scale. Will those graduating cum laude please stand and be recognized at this time? Thank you. you, may be seated. Those undergraduates graduating mag magna cum laude with high honor have GPAs of 3.68 to 3.84. Those of you please stand so we may recognize you. Thank you, you may be seated, congratulations. And finally, those graduating summa cum laude with highest honor, having a 3.85 GPA or higher, congratulations on this outstanding achievement. So proudly stand so that we may honor you as well. So next, I would call your attention to student members of academic honor societies and the UHV honors program. These students are wearing cords or stoles to indicate membership in these societies, which are listed in your program. Graduates of, honors pro of the honors program completed an extensive curriculum supporting or supplementing their normal academic work while maintaining a high GPA, they are wearing gold medallions designating their achievements. Would all of the student members of these honor societies and honors programs please stand right now and be recognized? You may also have noticed graduates wearing red, white, and blue intertwined graduation cords. We call these our Patriot cords. These individuals are wearing Patriot cords because they are veterans or active service members in the U.S. Armed Forces. So at this time, we ask that all graduating veterans, as well as any other veterans, 
in the building or active service members, please stand and be recognized at this moment because UHV thanks and salutes you for your service to our country. Please stand if you are active. Thank you. Thank you, please be seated. We also have with us graduating international students who are proudly wearing a sash representing their, company, their country of citizenship. International students are those enrolled at UHV on an F and J student visa status, and we are honored to have them with us as graduates. Please stand and be recognized at this time. Thank you. In addition, we have some special graduates who are wearing Jaguar Spirit Cords. These generous students are participating in our Jags Give Back program, and we appreciate their support of UHV. So if you're one of those, please stand and be recognized at this time. Thank you for your generosity and support of UHV. So finally, I'd like to recognize the outstanding students for spring 2020, fall 2020, and spring 2021, selected by the School of Business Administration. These students were chosen based on their academic records and other related achievements. So please hold your applause until the students are recognized. Now, if the following students are here, please stand. So for spring 2020, Juan Bo Pham, outstanding graduate student, and Teresa C. Salas, outstanding undergraduate student. For fall 2020, Jacqueline Ramirez, outstanding graduate student, and Cole Guthrie, outstanding undergraduate student. And for spring 2021, Siama Mohammed Bagga, outstanding graduate student, and Jessica Luann Janis, outstanding undergraduate student. If any of those names have been, uh, are you here today, please stand and be recognized. And now, the candidates for degree in the School of Business Administration will be presented by the Dean, Dr. Ken Colwell. Will the candidates for Bachelor of Business Administration, Masters of Accountancy, and Masters of Business Administration please rise? Should be all of you. <laughs> On behalf of the faculty, I present these candidates as having fulfilled the requirements for the designated degrees and recommend that the appropriate degrees be conferred. Please remain standing. Will the faculty and platform party please rise? President Glenn, it is my distinct honor to present to you these degree candidates who are students in good standing with the University of Houston Victoria and have completed all of the requirements for their respective degrees as set forth by the faculty of the university. I recommend that these degrees be conferred. We keep talking to you about being present in this moment. And I'm going to ask you to do it again, to be present in this moment because this is the moment you've been waiting for. 
captured in this moment in time are hours and weeks and months and years of preparation and dedicated work. So take just one more moment to reflect on that investment and on your hard-won accomplishments. By the authority vested in me by the state of Texas, and on behalf of the faculty of the School of Business Administration, I now confer upon each of you and upon those graduating in abstentia your respective degrees with all rights, honors, and privileges thereunto appertaining. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduating class of the University of Houston, Victoria. Please be seated. In just a moment, you'll be ushered forward by the marshals, who will ask you to come over here and pick up a diploma cover. I'll be waiting for you right up here at the front. We'll have our picture taken. You'll walk over into this corner for additional pictures. Family members, we encourage you to take pictures from where you are. And I would remind you that after the ceremony is open, you may come up to the platform for additional pictures if you would like to. I will also speak just briefly to the parents and the families here. When we call your student's name, you're going to be tempted, sorely tempted, to be raucous, to make noise, to holler and hoop. Go ahead. <laughs> this is a joyous occasion. This is not a funeral. This is a time to be happy. This is a time to express that joy. When your student comes out here, this is their moment to stand in the middle of this stage, in this spotlight, and declare to the world, this is who I am, and I have a path forward. Let's all be happy about that. And then as your student exits to the right, hush up. Because there's going to be another student, and it will be his or her turn to stand in the potlight. So, marshals, I would ask for you now to bring forward the graduates for the presentation of diplomas. I am now pleased to announce the names of those receiving their bachelor's of administration, oh, master's, sorry, it's bachelor's, okay, I was right the first time. Um, it's my privilege to now announce the names of those receiving the bachelor's of business administration degree from the School of Business Administration. Lori Ann Zamora, magna cum laude. Emily Nicole Gomez, cum laude. <laughs> Bianca Lucero Garcia. Kristen R. Coates. Pablo Alejandro Bracho, magna cum laude. Miranda Amador Bracho. <laughs> 
Jessica Luann Janice, summa cum laude, outstanding student. <laughs> Megan Elizabeth Gideon. <laughs> Christina Fonseca Montoya. Lance Joseph Taylor, summa cum laude. Johnny Salinas, cum laude. Carmen Mancera. Deborah Ann Gray. <laughs> Samantha Ann Yezigeri, magna cum laude. Caitlin S. Schulock, cum laude. Mark Anthony Pena, cum laude. Adriana Marie Razzo. Ashley Baroon McDonald. Jasmine Valdez Cum Laude. James Dean. Bray Cum Laude. <laughs> Eve Roland Vey. <laughs> Alfonso Tapia. Marina Nicole Mendoza. Edgar Loza. Paul Hernandez. I am now pleased to announce the names of those receiving their master's degree from the School of Business Administration. Jessica Gonzalez. <laughs> Melissa Viesca Gonzalez. Jennifer Karen Hansen. Hey, 
Travis L. Britt. Rachel Lindsay Robertson. Monica Annette Rodriguez. Brenda Bonewald. Luke Matthew Blundell. Catherine Irene Dornack. Sharon Ann Dement. Laura Lynn Edmondson. Sydney Dewin. Alyssa Shea Cavazos. Lucy Evelyn Dio. Blake Truett Daniel. Alexia Carly Lashai. Marcus Andrew Ricondo. Marissa Sanchez Zendejas. Kingsley Darlene Scott, UHV employee. Carolina Susanna Rodriguez. <laughs> Damien D. Riviera Lavariano. Myra Karen Martinez. <laughs> Cynthia Stephanie Granados. <laughs> Elizabeth Ashley Herrera. Sade Blanca.
Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I present to you the graduating class of the University of Houston Victoria School of Business Administration. At this point in our ceremony, it is customary and appropriate for bachelor's recipients to move their tassels on their mortarboard from the right to the left to signify that they are now the recipients of a degree of higher learning. If you are wearing a UHV class ring, you may also turn your ring so that the seal faces away from you. Congratulations again to all of our degree recipients and welcome to the company of educated persons. You now join more than 21,000 alumni of the University of Houston, Victoria. We invite you to become active alumni and keep close ties to your alma mater. We want to hear from you and know what you are doing to continue to make your mark on the world. Finally, I want to leave you with a simple benediction known as a Franciscan benediction. Please join me. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done, to bring justice and kindness to all of our children and the poor. Amen. It takes many people to plan and organize a commencement ceremony, and I'd like to thank the staff who's been working today, all day, and many days prior to this to make sure that all details were in place. I'd like us to give a simple round of applause to our staff who are standing here today who put so much work and effort into this ceremony. Let me also say to our graduates how proud we are of your accomplishment and that we salute you. Ladies and gentlemen in the audience, thank you for your joining us at this commencement ceremony. We would ask that uh, the audience remain seated during the recessional of the President's party and graduates while the graduates stand and follow the platform party out of the auditorium. Thank you. <laughs> 